Uh, okay, got it. Bear with us. The API integration is already working. Uh, awesome, it's working. All right. Okay, so we're good to go. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I know people are still uh, slowly entering our rooms. My name is Jenny Chen, the founder and CEO of 3D Heels. I've been talking about this speech thousands of times, and I, and I think people know what we do now, finally, is we have three missions, three main missions. One is to educate people. I mean, I think um, there are a lot of knowledge, new knowledge, um, and misunderstood knowledge in the, in, in out there, we want to make sure everybody know what 3D printing is, what it can really do in healthcare. And this is the original reason why I started 3D Heals. Um, over the years, I think we have developed the next two missions. Uh, one is to allow people to network with one another. We used to have worldwide communities where people meet in person. And I, I'm optimistic that we're gonna restart that in a couple of months, hopefully when COVID is you know, we know how to cope with it and we can go, go back to that. Um, but nowadays, you know, we have a lot of these virtual events, which I found extremely insightful and people still enjoy it. So I'm hoping to continue to host these virtual events so that people can um, network with one another. Um, this is a very early field and there are a lot of garage innovators, which I believe could be the founders of the future billionaire unicorn companies. And I'm hoping to meet you. <laughs> so if you're in um, the audience right now, feel free to enter your name, where you're from, what you're looking for, you know, just saying hi, but you know, using the chat box. Also feel free to share your emotions, what, where you are right now today, so there's emojis you could use. I think nowadays everybody knows how to use emojis. Um, Feel free exactly to share your LinkedIn link as well so that you can add other people or allow other people to add you. Um, and then the final uh, mission for 3D Hills is to discover startups that we can help with fundraising. I personally invest in some of them as well. Uh, there's no cost to this program called Pitch 3D to any companies if it fulfills our criteria for being early stage innovative company in the space of 3D technologies that include 3D printing related technologies or 3D visualization, AR, VR, uh, and, and, and materials, basically. So it's uh, basically 3D printing in an adjacent field. Um, but I also wanna give acknowledgement for our uh, sponsor for this webinar series and uh, the uh, HP Venture and HP both have been our sponsors for the last year to support this kind of activities for us. So I wanna give them a shout out. They're obviously very active in the space uh, from either startup side or innovation technology side. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce the panel. Today's panel is very relevant to the entire healthcare 3D printing community because I believe this is the first time people understand what 3D printing can do in healthcare, which is the orthotic and prosthetic space. This is something people can see, it's very visual and the story is very compelling. And it also, you know, affect everybody, entire world, especially in the developing country, uh, which we have several speakers who have experience in that space. Um, so today's uh, speaker is also very comprehensive, very diverse from all over the world, first of all, and um, also from different perspectives. Some are clinicians, some are scientists, some are entrepreneurs. So I'm really excited to hear what they're gonna say. Please enter your questions into the QA box because I'm the only person manning this webinar today. I cannot scroll through all the chat to find your question and answer them, but I want to answer them. So put the questions in the QA box. So one, I can make sure that they get answered. Two is the speakers can actually type in the answer in the QA box directly so that you know, you will feel being engaged and your questions answered. All right, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the first speaker who is Midnight right now from Germany. I believe it's a Midnight, right? Professor Schmidt? Well, it's eight o'clock, so. Oh, it's eight o'clock, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so Professor Hans Schmidt uh, is a professor um, and uh, he is still teaching, I believe. Um, and he is, he has a degree in macromolecular chemistry um, and he has many experience 
with, um, I guess, the material science and chemical companies in his past career. Um, and he's also the co-founder uh, of a company called PP Print. Um, and he is actively involved in the development of 3D printing materials for application in medical technology. This is very relevant uh, for today's uh, topic because I, I believe your material is also applied in prosthetic space. So I will let you take away, Professor. Okay. So I will share my screen. My presentation. Yes, um, Jenny, first of all, thank you very much uh, for us to the invitation to present here our efforts, what we did over the last eight years at the University of Bayreuth and then in the spin-off company, the PP Print GmbH. And I'm happy to talk about polypropylene as I believe a material of choice for 3D printing, particularly in the medical technology area. So what I would like to briefly introduce the people print GmbH, our mission, then why is polypropylene for 3D printing so important and give you examples then on PP print in the medical technology. And I also would like to announce this is mainly US seminar, our newest cooperation with Essen Fabrication in this area. Yes. Um, we started uh, the PP print company four years ago with a mission to establish polypropylene in the 3D printing market. This sounds strange because polypropylene, as you will see later, is the most important polymer, but it took many, many hurdles and PP, P polypropylene PP was not regarded to be really printable. But we started roughly eight years ago uh, in the framework of a PhD thesis to focus on how can you extrusion-based 3D print polypropylene. The company itself focuses therefore on polypropylene. This is of course an advantage because we can step-by-step step actually improve our materials, improve our knowledge. So this is highly driven by research and development effort, which we have. And we gained over the years, which we are working, I personally work for more than 20 years in the polypropylene area. We have a lot of experience, but it gained of course a lot of know-how about the different types of polypropylene, about the benefits of polypropylene. PP Print itself as a small startup company has a lot of direct customer support. And I think which is important to answer the questions from the customer because as you said, we have to learn from each other. Then we also have a 3D printing service, a factory and where we print day by day polypropylene and we get better and better. And that is of course something we'd like to share with our customers. So why do we concentrate on polypropylene? So here's one graph. This is the polymer demand by resin type. These are European figures, but they hold worldwide. And you see polypropylene is outstanding. The largest polymer actually produced and used in the world. Much, much larger than other important polymers like ABS or others. So why is it? Because it has an, a very good and uniform and broad property profile, which allows applications in almost all sectors of industry, including automotive, but also including the entire medical area. So face masks or syringes are made out of polypropylene. The spectrum of the advantages compared to other polymers is first of all is lightweight. So it has a density below of one, it is very break resistant, but also semi-flexible. So these are of course important properties which are used in several applications. It's food safe, micro safe resistant. Most important also, it's very stable against acids and bases and chemical resistance because a lot of applications require resistance towards chemicals, towards soaps, and particularly the area what we are talking later on is also important. It withstands temperature of, of boiling water, is sterilizable, but also more in view of a circular economy and in view of um, the point of reducing waste. Recyclability is very important in Europe, but also around the world, recycling streams available for polypropylene. 
this is actually an advantage with respect to if we talk about sustainability, which we also have to do in the 3D printing sector. So 3D printing of polypropylene, why was it not there? Is it not there for a long time? So the first uh, types of polypropylene, they were not actually good in quality. So therefore polypropylene was for a long time regarded as a not good 3D printable material. But as you will see on the next slide here, these are examples that we accomplished, particularly in the area of metallic technology to do this. Here are examples of 30 centimeter, 40 centimeter high objects. You see different of kinds in uh, the orthetic aids in orthosis, prothetics and other um, applications. So this is, I would like to talk about, but what did we have to do to come to this point that polypropylene can be printed in this way? There were three challenges we had to solve, actually. The first one is we need a filament which has the balanced property. We do not to be champion in one particular property, we need a balanced property profile for certain applications. The second thing that has to be solved, uh, we need a printing build surface, which has a strong enough adhesion between the printed part and the surface so that you can reliably, reliably print actually with FDM these parts. The last step, what is actually needed is a support material where you can 3D print more complex geometries. And we at People Print are the only company in the world which has been seen later on has a solution for all these three um, items which you have to solve to successfully print a polypropylene. The product portfolio which I would introduce now addresses exactly these three points. Uh, we have a filament, it's called P-filament 721. We have actually spool sizes of 600 grams, 1800 grams and 4000 grams, but also depends on the customer's requests. We have in two diameters, uh, 1.75 and 2.85. But at this point, I also want to stress another important advantage of polypropylene. Polypropylene is not hygroscopic. That means you can immediately use it. Actually, you don't have to dry it. A lot of materials like nylons, you have tedious drying actually. And that can be done, there's no question about it, but let's see the spools actually, you have to condition before use. This is not needed with polypropylene. If you have half a spool left, you can immediately actually use it again. The big, big plus actually in the technology of 3D printing makes it much, much easier. This filament now, we have a lot of comparisons. We have a lot of methods of course, but here I would like to show you just an example of three commercial filaments. And here's the geometric deformation, which is important because polypropylene is a semi-crystalline polymer. That means you have to fight against warpage. And you see here on this side, our polypropylene has the best geometric deformation um, compared to the other filaments. More detailed, you can make stress strain curves. And what you see here is you have parallel to the printing direction, a good performance, but here in the Z direction, this stock bond breaks directly. This is not good for 3D printing because you cannot make a three-dimensional objects. The commercial filament two has a higher modulus, but didn't solve this problem. Commercial filament three has a low modulus, is better, but here this is our product. And you see, first of all, the parallel and perpendicular is the same. So we have a relatively high modulus and the indication we have a very high or optimized interlayer bonding. And that is important for the uh, final product of a 3D printed part. And again, the advantages are clear. Here are examples of medical technology, lightweight. Of course, the weight, what you carry, have to carry on your body is important. Break resistant, semi-flexible, sterilizable, and what you also have to have is a certified biological safety. And we did with our filament, but not only with the filament, but also with printed products out of our filament, we have a certification for biological safety according to a European norm. And that is of course very important in skin contact for the applications what we are talking today. 
So our filament, but more important also the printed parts, actually you pass this test if it is needed in your application and for your product. Um, we have a full range of colors we developed and here we also have colors uh, which are safe. In this respect, you see we, are, we offer about 12 colors and right now we have a new version of beige skin color and also signal blue was requested. So of course colors, because aesthetics also should be aesthetics. And I think color plays a very important role in this if particularly uh, think about um, aid devices for children and also uh, in the safety part. The next step is the filament is not only enough because you need now a printing build surface which ensures actually during the printing of hours a tight adhesion to the printing bed. It's not just the adhesion which is important because you could glue it or stick it forever, but you also have to release it. And in order to do this, we developed with a lot of peel tests, we did peel tests, with different types of materials to make a build surface specially designed for polypropylene. It also works for other polymers, but here we try to optimize everything in one package for polypropylene. It's an easy installation to all printer beds. It's also available in sizes uh, to all printer sizes. You do you not need a pretreatment, so no additional primer, solution, chemicals, or glues. It has a perfect adhesion during 3D printing. And then most important, if you heat it up to around 90 degrees in your printer, you can then defect-free release it from out of your printer. The um, printing surface is durable. It can be used many, many times. And we also have a special cleaner developed that you can make hundreds of times. Really, it's not actually a wasted product, but a lot of people are using foils and films. So here we really have a very durable and also a sustainable material for 3D printing developed. The last issue what was missing was a support material. And the support material enables actually the production of more complex structures with shapes and openings and overhangs by FDM uh, technology. And here you see an example of an actual um, autosis. And you see here the bottom has, for instance, support material, which is not a flat surface, but also you could not print this overhang here where you need a support material in order to do this. So our support material is, has an optimal balanced adherence as well to the polypropylene, as well to the surface, because you need both. And it's a breakaway support material, because again, here our philosophy is to avoid any solvents and it's easy, can be easily removed. Also at valid temperatures, you can manually peel it away to get your final product. Also, the support structures, of course, is in principle a waste material. Any support is a waste. Here we actually established a recyclable circular economy process because we take from our customers the material back and give them a benefit. Now, the last part I would like to mention is that we partner uh, with ASIN Fabrication, which is 